Morning. It's George Heller, West 80 South Pole Farm. Uh, just out here doing the morning routine. Uh, coming out. Usually got to come break a little bit of ice off of the water trough over there. There was uh, about... I want to say... About three quarters of an inch of ice on there. It's... Uh, I think it's like 12 or 13 degrees Fahrenheit out here so not too bad for the temperature um, there is no electricity keeping that warm at all it's all ground heat coming up from the bottom um, yeah it's pretty nice out here this morning it's like I'm not sure what you would call this the frost that we have I don't know it's pretty neat it's like got a little uh just little growths of frozen water coming everywhere Let's see if we can get it to focus on it that's kind of neat but uh yeah, just kind of going to just go over morning routine. I just come out here, try to get out here by like 8 o'clock in the morning. That's, if I can get out here by then, they, then they haven't uh, come up and wanted water yet. So, if I can get ahead of that, that's always a good thing. If you don't get ahead of that, there's a big group up here trying to water and they get a little bit rowdy around the water trough. I don't really like that too much, so try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, this winter, let's see, I'm not sure what the date is. It's out here on a Sunday. Um, I suppose it's like the 20, 20th or something. I don't know. Not sure. I don't pay attention to that too much. Um, cattle are doing pretty well, uh, they seem to be holding their condition pretty well. Got a, uh, this is a half Jersey, half South Pole, gonna be a steer right here. He's in pretty good shape. Uh, got some good muscle on him, I think. Everybody says they're pretty tasty, so let's see. Um, British white, majority British white heifers right here. And that jersey, that's a, her bull calf that you're just looking at right there. She was doing uh, pretty lousy here at the beginning of the winter and thought I was going to lose her. And now she's been doing pretty, pretty well lately. She actually put some condition on and... Um, really kind of came back around so I'm pretty happy about that it was kind of touch and go there for a little bit with her uh, yeah, these dairy cows they just don't they can't do it like these uh, like these beef cattle and yeah, look at that tail head on this one here this is her last year's heifer calf she's got another heifer calf on her nursing on her right now and then even look at these British white heifers there I mean they're in real good condition and they're you know they're not getting any grain or anything like that here's our here's our herd bull he's I mean he's got good condition on him too so Pretty happy with how they're coming through the winter. Um, they're keeping their condition on pretty well. Uh, been kind of got onto a kind of a schedule of uh, feeding one big round bale of grass hay uh, every other day. Been trying to stick to that, haven't always. Um, and then I've got these wrap bales that are sorghum sedan grass, peas, and oats. And I think maybe some rye as well. And I've been feeding those uh, one a day on those. So that kind of 
sort of like a protein supplement for them, I guess, instead of having a lick tub out here. I don't have a... I, I had bought one lick tub earlier to help that jersey along, and uh, once I started getting into some good bales there, they, it seemed like she was doing pretty well, and um, was able to start putting condition on, so... Uh, sheep haven't quite made it up here just yet. Uh, got some tussling around going on here. And then bull calves is... Oh, they're messing around that... Uh, that heifer might be in heat. That's that white heifer. Uh, we got to get the bulls out of here, I think, in February. Uh... Then we won't have any calves after October. We don't want we don't want any calves after October because it's just not enough time. I don't think it's enough time to get put on a bunch of condition before the winter starts. I mean that's only only a month as it is if they're born on October first. So it, it we like to we want to. Uh, we want to have a calving window from May till like September would be ideal, and rather just have it just May to July would be more ideal. Um, we'll see how that goes. See what happens this next calving season with that. Um, we got a couple of salt blocks up here. I haven't graduated up to the free choice enterprises mineral just yet I that's something I've been really wanting to do and I haven't gotten there yet and probably this summer that'll happen um, and then hopefully that'll even make a better difference bigger difference on the condition of these animals I hope I'm sure it's not gonna hurt um, never hurts to give them a little extra Keep them going. Well, there's that pretty little heifer there. See if she'll come and let us see her. Just a little bit shy. Right there. She was born uh, in September, I guess. Now that I think about it. I think I might have said October on another video. That was wrong. I think it was in September she was born. And she's really growing, like, quite a bit. I'm really surprised how big she's getting. She's just... She's just a pretty little calf. Um, it's purebred South Pole. Her mother is, uh... That black-faced one right behind the jersey there. That's her mom. Uh... Yeah, she's really impressed me with how much she's grown and the condition she's in, too. She's in really good condition, so she must be getting plenty of milk off of her mother. They seem to produce plenty of milk. You want me to talk about you? Okay. <laughs> they just... These British whites are pretty docile too. I know everybody talks about the the. Uh, I know everybody talks about the South Pole being real docile, but the uh, British whites are really, really nice cattle as well. Um, I certainly can't knock them at all. That's for sure. Right, Chad. What do you think, buddy? Oh, okay. I guess we waited around long enough here. We got the sheep. The sheep come up now to see us. There's one of our rams there. He's a St. Croix, St. Croix Cross. Uh, he's mostly St. Croix, and then he's got Katahdin in him as well. Um, got another, we got a colored ram out here too. Running two rams right now on 50 U's. Uh, seems to be enough ram power. Uh, we might add one more ram next year. 
to the to the breeding program. See, what, have to see what happens. Um, yeah, but we just brought the Rams in here on uh, first week of January, like January second. We put them in here. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at uh, late May, real late May, early June lambing. Uh, and then the the grass will be kicking real well. Uh, we'll have it'll be nice and warm, and uh, we won't have to worry about the lambs being born into the cold. And you know, you definitely don't want to be lambing like in this weather. But I guess a lot of people lamb in the barns and stuff like that. I just I don't know. That just seems like a lot of work, and they talk about the market I don't know it's time the farmers start telling the market what we're doing instead of the market telling us what they want because it just I don't know it doesn't make any sense you got the you got the market telling us what to do instead of us setting the market that's that I think that should be the other way around. I know it's supply and demand, but uh, sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense. It really doesn't. Kind of rambling, but yeah, so I don't know. It just really looks really nice out here this morning. I'll give you a panoramic here before we get out of here. Um, I talk a little bit about went morning routine and things like that and it's nice to come out each day and check on them and check how they're doing see if there's anybody doing poorly uh, it doesn't take long for something to go bad once they start going poorly if you don't check on them if you leave them alone for a couple days things can happen real quick Especially in the winter time, um, so it's really nice to keep a good eye on them. And uh, can, I feel like you can manage a little better that way too, because if you're on the daily out here seeing what the conditions are, then you have a better idea of what you need to be doing to either improve or change something or you know you gotta always look to be improving you can't just be satisfied with what's happening and just stay there you gotta keep trying to move forward there's always room for improvement so um it's always looking for something like that but well with that i'll stop rambling and everybody have a great day